Our Heavenly Father, we want to say thank you for the Sabbath that has drawn now. We pray that uh, you may give us an experience that we have never had before, that we may have a higher cleansing as even we gather to worship your name. Be with us in this program. Program In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. Uh, I have just a few sentiments to go through, and uh, it will not be much. Some miscellaneous statements that uh, we don't look at. Uh, welcome, Brother Eric Leo. Uh, I have really desired that you be here, but uh, God knows what happened. I hope uh, you will get the materials because the things we have been speaking of are so important to the working and I hope the brethren that you are near with, they will be able to give you uh, first-hand or second-hand information as it will seem good to them. But these have been very important sessions and I'm praying that uh, those who have been here, we have been benefited. Just looking at uh, some miscellaneous statements that uh, uh, we hadn't looked at, or we had looked at, but uh, we would like to remind ourselves uh, about uh, church organization and gospel order. The matter was laid before me, which I was trying to present before the brethren. There is altogether too much responsibility imparted to a few men in Battle Creek, and these men need the transforming power of the Holy Spirit, else they will lead God's heritage into false paths. The conferences are watching every move made at the end of the work. The different conferences have been led to look to the leading men at the Battle Creek, feeling that no important move can be made without their approval. This tendency has been growing strong until it is a serious hindrance to the advancing of the work. And we are being told that the arrangements that all money should pass through the general conference and then trickle down to the people is a, a poor management of the work. And so uh, we saw that. Uh, the conference, the general conference has established a means of robbing the people instead of helping them by money going there at the top and not, and then when uh, it is needed to trickle down, it doesn't trickle down. And so in the true gospel order and what is a church of God, we are told the Lord has not placed any one of his speak of human agencies under the dictation and control of those who are themselves but erring mortals. He has not placed upon men the power to say, you, will, you shall do this and you shall not do that. But there is a power exercised in battle quick that has not, uh, God has not given, and he will judge those who assume this authority. They have somewhat of the same spirit that led Uzzah to lay his hand on the ark to steady it. And so we are seeing that uh, power should not be vested in a few people in one agency to be able to control everything. Uh, this is a, a statement we didn't read. Some of our leading men are inclined to indulge in the spirit manifested by the apostle John when he said, Master, we saw one casting out devils in thy name, and we forbade him because he followeth not with us. Organization and discipline are essential, but there is now very great danger of a departure from the simplicity of the gospel of Christ. What we need is less dependent upon mere form and ceremony, and far more of the power of the true godliness. If their life and character are exemplary, let all work who will in any capacity. And uh, although they may not conform exactly to your methods, not a word should be spoken to condemn or discourage them. When the Pharisees desired decide Jesus to silence the children who, who, who sang his praise, the Savior said, if this should hold their peace, the stones would immediately cry out. Prophecy must be fulfilled. So in these days, the work must be done. There are many departments of labor. Let everyone act apart as best he is. can. The man with one talent is not to bury that in the earth. God has given to every man his work according to his ability. Those to whom Larger trusts and capabilities have been committed should not endeavor to silence others who are less able or experienced. Men with one talent may reach a class that those with two or five talents cannot reach. Each great and small alike are chosen vessels to bear the word of life to thirsting souls. Let not those who preach the word lay their hands upon the humblest work and say, you must labor in this channel or not at all, or not work at all. Hands of brethren, let everyone 
everyone work in his own sphere with his own armor on doing whatever he can do in this humble way yet while we are reading this uh, quotes that seems to talk about independent out of the body it does not mean that uh, people have just to work haphazardly without uh, uh, being part of a church or being part of a conference and or being part uh, of any form of organization for we are told in one same that as we draw to the end of the time people will further the statement that each one needs to work without any kind of organization or any other, uh, any kind of council but this is not what the lord is saying uh it is not the order of god that any man or any class of men should assume that god has made them concerned of their brethren or put forth the finite hand in patronizing manner to control the lord's delegated workers thus endangering the safety of the lord's heritage as well as their own and retarding the work of god god does not confine himself to one man or to set of men through whom to accomplish his work but says of all he are laborers together with god this is uh testimonies to ministers and gospel workers tm 208 paragraph 2. and so uh conferences are to touch conferences and uh our fields are to touch fields churches are to touch fields all need to work in a harmonious way consulting with each other and yet uh, we shouldn't run to the other extreme no organization and we shouldn't run on another extreme no uh, uh of anarchy where everyone works as they are they want uh the people have lost confidence in those who have the management of the work yet we hear that the voice of the conference is the voice of god every time i have heard this i have thought it was almost blasphemy the voice of the conference ought to be the voice of what? Of God, but it is not because some in connection with it are not men of faith and prayer. They are not men of elevated principle. So what destroys the conference is not the having of the conference, but the men connected with the conference itself. And so we are seeing that organization and system is not a bad thing. The bad thing is the men who are put in places to be able to organize the work. And so a strange thing has come in our churches. Many who are placed in positions of responsibilities that they may be wise helpers to their fellow workers have come to suppose that they were set as what? Kings and rulers in the churches. Elders and Bible workers do not have to exercise kingly power and rulership in the churches. They have to guide, they have to feed the flock of God. And in assuming kingship and rulership upon the flock and the lordship, they say to one brother, do this, to another, do that, and to another, be sure to labor in such and such a way. There have been places where the workers have been told that if they do not follow the instruction of these men of responsibility, then what happens? Their pay from the conference will be. And so you are seeing that we have conferences and it have workers and elders and gospel workers working and they are receiving tithe, is it? So we don't have something like disorganization and a person working on their own without any organization. We have the agencies that the Lord has been put in place. But these men should not assume to say that one shall labor like this and another like that. And if they don't do this, that uh, their pay will be withheld. That, this is uh, kingship and rulership. But discipline and order has to characterize actually every organization. The true Seventh day Adventist church is a group of equal sons and daughters of the King of Heaven, heirs equal. Church force cannot produce true unity but has caused divisions and has given rise to sects and parties innumerable. And there are not a few professing Christians who reject church organization on account of the use that has been made of creed and church power. So the reason why people are refusing organization is what? The use of creed and church power. They are not refusing organization because it is bad and it's not there in the Bible or in the spirit of prophecy, but because people are practicing uh, cradle and uh, a power which has not been given unto them. What is the remedy for this? The remedy for these deplorable evils is found in the proper. Hey, let us read together. The remedy for these deplorable evils is found in the moving independently. Proper use of, proper use of and church 
So we have been laboring with this question from Monday until today, is it? And people have been asking questions, how do we do away with kingship and lordship in the church? Is it to move independent and out of this, uh, and move in disorganization? No, that is not what is advised in the Bible or in the spirit of prophecy. Actually, the way to cut off these evils is to have a simple organization which everyone can understand and church order as set forth in where? New Testament, precisely where? In the book of Acts. The minister who submits his ministry to a superior a bishop or a president or any authority in the church to be sent out and directed in his ministry cannot in the fullest sense be Christ's ambassador. Now digest that for a minute because somebody will understand it in a different way that you don't have to tell anyone you are going anywhere or you are going to do this and that. And you can just go and teach what you want. Once some people read a line in a statement, they forget all they have read. When you are reading the statement, that uh, the minister who submits his ministry to a superior or a bishop, a president, or an, one in authority in the church to be sent out and directed in his ministry cannot, in the fullest sense, be Christ ambassador. Now, in the, same, in, in the same quote, in the same paragraph, she says that the remedy for these deplorable evils is found in the proper use of symbol organization in church. So, as a minister, will you just go out without anyone knowing and going out to teach? some strange things. No, that is not simple order. God has a church, it is not the great cathedral, neither is it in the national establishment, neither is it in the various denominations. It is the people who love God and keep. And when people read about loving God's commandments, how many commandments do they think they have? Some one, some, some two, some, Psalm 10, and you start reading the Ten Commandments. The Ten Commandments is a summary of 66 books in the Bible. And Christ does not tell his disciples, go teach, baptizing them, and teach them to observe the Ten Commandments. What does he tell them? All the things I have taught you. And when it says all the things, it means all the things. Where to or Three are present who love and obey the commandments of God. Jesus there precise, let it be in the desolate place of the earth, in the wilderness, in the city, enclosed in prison walls. The glory of God has penetrated the prison walls, flooding with glorious beams of heavenly light, the darkest dungeon. His saints may suffer, but their suffering will, like the apostles of old, spread their faith and win souls to Christ and, glory, his, uh, and glorify his na holy name. The bitterest opposition expressed by those who hate God's great moral standard of righteousness should not and will not shake the steadfast soul who trust fully in, the, in God. And so, even if the whole world refuse gospel order and organization, do you know that three members can have organization and, do, and finish the work? Yeah. It doesn't mean that now everyone that is here is going to accept what has been presented. But if three brethren leave this place and decide to have a church organization and gospel order, that is what God will actually accept. And so God says, God will choose humble men who are, who are seeking to glorify his name and advance his cause rather than to own and, and advance themselves. He will raise up men who have not so much worldly wisdom, but who are connected with him and who will seek strength and counsel from above. And this is what we want. We want men who can seek counsel from God, men who can be able to know what the Lord is speaking to them. And so I'm uh, just uh, praying that uh, uh, we may be fortified in the scriptures and uh, we may seek to adhere to every principle that the Lord has directed us. And uh, we will continue reading more and more of these things. And uh, some vital points to those ministers who are going outside there to work. 
There are those who demand high wages for their labors, but who bring few souls into the truth to stand steady fast and true to its principles. Our work is not just to baptize. But our work is to bring souls into the truth to stand steadfast and true to what? It is principles. Our work is not to go outside there and baptize. Our work is to establish people in present truth that they may stand before God during investigative judgment. It is time for our ministers to humble their hearts before the Lord and bear a straight convincing testimony to the people. It is time for them to labor earnestly to increase the membership of the churches, leading all to a what? Shallow understanding of the truth. A thorough understanding for, of truth for what? For this time. And there are many truths contained in the word of God, but what the flow of God needs is what? Present truth. I saw that the sanctuary in connection with the 2300 days and the faith of Jesus Christ is able to explain our past, present, and our future precisely helping us to draw closer to, grow, to God, early writing page 63, paragraph two. One of, one of the jobs of the minister is to train the member as he is raising up the church so that when he leaves it in the hands of an, it is strong functioning church. This work should be mostly accomplished before an elder is done what? Are we together, brethren? You don't go at a place, find people who are proclaiming to know the truth baptize them and leave them like that if you are going to baptize them then you have to plant a church in that place and leave them in church of an elder and if not so we were told that um, you should organize these people to remain with the gospel worker until they reach at a time when they are able to be organized into a church there should be no haphazard work that people are baptized and left like that. Hovering takes place after the church has been raised up and organized, and the pastor continues to put most of his time in that church as it is easy, lazy work. The ministers of such a time as this have to move in the field rather than the besitting adults who can feed themselves. So make sure that as you are going at a place to establish a church, that you do a thorough work. At the time you are leaving, the people are really settled into truth and an elder amongst them can be found if that is not possible and you are an evangelist then try to work with bible workers who can continue doing their efforts in that place until a church is established people come into truth and that place is established and so we read about this guy i'm not going to read through it and so as long as churches rely upon laborers from abroad to strengthen and encourage their faith, they will not become strong in themselves. They should be instructed that their strength will increase in proportion to their personal efforts. The more closely the New Testament plan is followed in missionary labor, the more successful will be the efforts put forth. Paul never planted a church and then left it without a Bible worker to continue with it and do the things that were still wanting in that place. Timothy, Titus, uh, uh, Epaphroditus and all these people were left in this place uh, so that the work may continue while he went on to do other work. And so our ministers should do a thorough work, not haphazard work, so that uh, uh, when they live at the place, people are really uh, grounded into present truth. And if anyone will come with an error, they'll be able to detect that this is an error. And so that is why we say that. Uh, labor as much as you can to know that these people are in truth. Our ministers are to work on the gospel plan of ministering. It has been presented to me that all through America, there are barren fields. As I traveled through the South on my way to the conference, I saw city after city that was unworked. What is the matter? The ministers are hovering over churches which know the truth while thousands are perishing out of Christ. If the proper instruction were given, if the proper methods were followed, every church member will do his work as a, as a member of the body. He will do Christian missionary work, but the churches are dying and they want a minister to preach to them. They should be taught to bring faithful tithe to God that he may strengthen and bless them. They should be brought into working order that the breath of God may come to them. They should be taught that unless they can stand alone without a minister, they need 
need to be converted anew and baptized to what? Anew. They need to be born again. So I ask you, and I ask myself, when we are going to labor somewhere, in which state do we leave the people? Do we leave them still as babies needing milk? Is that what we should be doing? That is not what we should be doing. When we live at a place, let us live when people are grounded and thorough in the gospel order. So this is what she says. Ye are laborers together with God. Where are the what? The churches. My heart ached when I was in California. There are young men traveling around and around in the churches, but where is the power? Where is the power to open the fields for them and to say, here we are, not to stay with the people that know the truth. Here is a field that knows nothing about it. And this field is to be converted and educated as far as they will yield to the so what are the words that the evangelists and the elders are doing? It means that they should be training the youths in their churches so that they may send them into barren fields to do a work and open up churches. But what are the elders doing amongst us? We think that the work of the elders is like what was in the GC church to come and announce some announcements. There need to be a proper education conducted in the church that the youths may be grounded so that they may be sent out in barren fields to do a work that has never been done before and plant churches themselves. We have a responsibility, we have a work that we have to do. And if we don't realize it, we shall be elders by name and not by description. And this is what we love most. We love titles, but the description of the titles that comes with those jobs, we are not uh, able to do them. And so if you will call yourself an elder, show me the results of your eldership. Since you became an elder, how many youths have you trained with the word of the Lord and you have sent them in the field to do the work? Some will complain that youths are not interested. Why are the youths not interested to be missionaries? Because they are not work, encouraged to work in the right way? Because you, 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 you have taken everything to yourself. Instead of passing the baton to these youths, you have to do everything and monitor everything. They should be trained so that they may be able to go out and open uh, um, churches. We are told about these who travel from place to place and from place to place, to look after the churches, God help you by giving you the spirit of the message that your souls shall yearn after other souls and you will not let go until they are converted. This is the work we want to see done. To see done. And until that spirit comes in and takes hold of every mind in every conference that they are conducting, that they are elevating the very light that should be elevated, health reform, that they are elevating their self-denial uh, uh, and self-sacrifice. So we need to see this work going forward. We need to see more of the youths in the church being trained, more of the women Bible workers being trained. Everyone in the church should be a missionary. Every child of God in the Seventh-day Adventist should be a missionary. And with such an army of youth rightly trained, how will we have the seed being sown in all the field and the soon coming of Christ will be able to happen? But if we don't go and do this in our churches, that uh, we think that uh, our work is uh, just to be there on the Sabbath and give a sermon. No, time for sermon is over. We have sermonized since 1844 until now. It is time for sermons are over. We are told to go teach, baptize, and teach. Sermonizing, we are told, should take less of our time. And we are told if we are summonizing, it will not be even above 40 minutes. If you go for long, it should be one hour. But teaching should occupy our time. And people need to be thoroughly trained. And so this is one of the places that the conference has failed. We have no settled pastors over our churches. But our ministers are all missionaries. 
as were the early ministers of Jesus Christ, conscientiously they are the most of their time deprived of the blessing of the, of the home. From the president of the general conference to the workers of the church, there was no sitting minister to babysit the church members. People were in the field. And when a G. Daniels tried to do this, to sit around and order people to go to the field, E.G. White wrote to him and Prescott that you have to leave that office and go to the city and do some work. Your work was not elected to be the general conference president to sit in an office and tell people, go do that and go do that. Go to the field and do some work instead of having debates and arguments in the office. And so she says that we are not our sitting pastors. And so she says, do not my... Do not, my ministering brethren, allow yourself to be kept at what? At home to do what? To serve tables and do not hover around the churches, preaching to those who are already fully established in the faith. Teach the people to have light in themselves and not to depend upon the ministers. They should have Christ as their helper and should educate themselves to help one another so that the minister can be free to enter new fields. An important work is to be done in the world. New fields are to be open and the zeal and the missional spirit that Christ manifested are greatly needed, or that the power of God will set the truth home to every heart, or that all might see the necessity of having a living connection with God and of knowing and doing his will from day to day. The work of the elder, the work of an evangelist, the work of a gospel minister is not to sit in the churches, serving tables, solving matters that actually not have even important. There are matters that should be solved. Deacons should do such a work. Gospel ministers should go out and win people to the, uh, uh, to, the, uh, to, to the church of God. We have not settled our ministers over churches as pastors to any large extent. In some of the very large churches, we have elected who? pastors, but as a rule, we have held ourselves ready for field service, evangelistic work, and our brethren and sisters have held themselves ready to maintain their church service and carry forward their church work without word. And I hope this will never cease to be the order of affairs in this. This is a uh, uh, G. Daniel Pacific Union Recorder, Volume 11. Take the reference. Now, listen to the president of the general conference, what he says as I finish. This is the general conference president speaking. Let us read together. Now, when I ended upon the ministry, I never expected to do anything else but the message in new one. I had not the remotest idea of anything else. It never entered into my head nor heart, nor was it a desire uh, I had one thought, and that was to go out and preach the third angel's message to people who did not know it. I did not think of anything else for a long time. As any man of any reason will do, I began to study how to do that work most successfully. That led me to study methods of labor, policies, ways of working, and I will say, brethren, that for a dozen years, or 13, I think it was, my whole time was spent in what we may call the fieldwork, evangelistic endeavor. I had no conference responsibilities, nothing in the way of what? I was just plowing, plowing, plowing all the time in new fields. This guy was not like Ted Wilson. This guy was not like you. This, this, this was serious times. The people recognized the times they were living in and what was to be done. But uh, we think that when we are brought into position, our work is a work of administration. We sit there as gospel workers and tell somebody do that and someone do that. You should plunge yourself in the field and see the difficulties that even the gospel workers are getting so that you may know even how to interact with your, with your gospel workers when they tell you this must be done you should be able to listen because they go to the field and they know the difficulties we are not set as president and kings to tell fellow gospel workers this is how you should do things try to go outside the field and you'll see how different it is when you come back so uh 
We cannot settle down. We cannot think in terms of appointing full-time ministers to care for what? Yeah, and that, that is not what we are going to do. If you call us to appoint you as a full-time minister, don't think that you are going to do that. You, you are in charge of a, a small church. No. If you are saying that you are a full-time minister, you mean you are going to the field to do some work. Their job is to provide an outreach to lead the people themselves into a witnessing program. They are not to settle down like mother hens. You have wings and you gather your children together. This is not the work of a full-time gospel minister. Some people have been asking what is full-time gospel minister. They are not to settle down like mother hens over little cheeks and warm the people with their presence. They are to teach the people how they can warm their own hearts through experience in soul winning work. Nevertheless, elders are to be appointed in every church. Laymen are to be the ones in church. In church. I think things are becoming clearer and clearer every time we read these things. And that is why I encourage us to go and read. I have prepared a folder with full materials from Brother Zadok and other ministers so that we may go and read things. And I'm asking you people to read the church history that I have put in the folder. You know, after we, are re we have read that church history, we will never raise some questions that we raise or we will never settle down or uh, are satisfied with meager uh, outcome of what we are doing. We will see how these people worked, how they didn't, were not even able to put breakfast on their tables and the little sense they had to put uh, breakfast on the table, they used to establish the work. While actually we cry so much about money, there's a lot to be done. And so uh, I praise the Lord that uh, he has been able to give us a chance to listen. He has been able to give me a chance to present uh, in these meetings and uh, uh, the brethren who have been involved in this. Uh, may the Lord bless you people and uh, just give you a new zeal. Not anarchy, not extremism of kingship and rulership, but uh, uh, an organized way to work and be able to finish the work. When we say the word, we want to finish the work. It should be accompanied by the truth of the word of God. Not what we think about finishing the work, but as the Lord himself says that we should finish the work. Otherwise, the Lord be with us. And um, I have taken more of your 10 minutes, but uh, I know uh, it is beneficial unto all of us. Shall we pray? Heavenly Father, without you that we cannot do anything, we can do nothing, and religion will be a mere ceremony and forms. What we want is the power of the Holy Spirit to accompany these messages. We don't want to scare anyone, but Lord, we want to be united as brethren according to Psalms 133. And this you will rejoice in it and pour out thy Holy Spirit upon thy Lampshin church. Awake us. There is uh, much talking of the apostles in the general conference, but the people who are really separated from the conference, general conference, they do not know anything to do. It is just talk and talk, and there is no fruit, Lord. We need a, a conversion in our lives. We need a rethinking of what we are doing. And above all, Lord, what we need is Christ in our hearts so that we may be in connection with the leader of the church. Thank you for thy blessing this week and thank you for drawing us closer to thee. May the deals of the latter end continue attending unto our lives. And Lord, we are blessed to live in such a time as this we say thank you. May thy will continue to be done amongst us as a people. In Christ Jesus' name we request of these things. Amen. Amen.